Hi, my name is Richard. I live in New York City, and one of my favorite parts about living here is getting to see a Broadway show. Of course, you don't have to live in New York to see a show. Theater is an over $8 billion industry with thousands of community and regional theaters nationwide. Yet there are just 41 famous theaters located along a street called Broadway in New York City's Manhattan. These are called the Broadway theaters, where many of the most famous plays and musicals of all time had their first big performances. At just these theaters alone, over 12 million people fill the seats every year. Theater requires so many people working behind the scenes. Architects, ensuring that no matter the audience's viewing distance or angle, they can see the show. Lighting designers, setting light sources to the right color, brightness, and radius. Set designers, using precise measurements and being required to stay within budget. One concept that shows up in a lot of places is sight lines. No matter where an audience member is seated, ideally nothing blocks the invisible lines that connect their eyes to the stage. Set pieces should be viewable by everyone, and actors want to make sure they're seen. There's even a certain measurement that theater architects pay attention to called the C-value. This refers to the vertical distance between a seated audience member's eyes and the sight line of the person behind them. The greater the C-value, the more that everyone can see. It's also important what the audience can't see. This show features many life-size animal puppets that need to be completely hidden when not in the scene. Performers are especially careful behind this line on stage. So long you stay behind it, no one in the audience can see you. The line is determined by all of the sight lines that connect the whole auditorium to one corner of the theater's nearly 40-foot wide proscenium. Lighting designers must see shapes on stage too, as light can be thought of as cones, where the base is where the light ends up and the vertex is where it starts from. The manufacturer will usually provide a multiplication factor to go with each stage light. You can use this number to determine how much light will appear. When you multiply the distance to the light source by the multiplication factor, you get exactly how wide the pool of light will be. Much of Water for Elephants' story happens at a traveling circus. This meant that the show's creators were faced with a daunting task. How do we create a moving train on stage? Engineers had shapes on their minds too and had to build multiple parts that could be rolled around and reconfigured. To move on stage properly, this set piece had to be exactly 6 feet wide and 9 feet 6 inches long. Along the side, there was a ladder with rungs 1 foot 5 and 1 eighth inches apart to make sure that actors can climb up and down. At the bottom are four wheels. Each wheel is able to support 1,200 pounds. With all four wheels in place, this stage train can carry a load of 4,800 pounds, enough to actually carry an adult Indian elephant. While performing on stage might seem like the opposite of solving a math problem, math is inescapable. Even if you don't live anywhere near Broadway, there are thousands of theaters and performance spaces around the country, all with architects and designers trying to create stage magic of their own. Look for the math that's all around at a theater near you.